What's up, people? What's up, people? What's up, people? This is your boy, MM2K of PNTS Network and the Hard Knock Digital Culture, back again with another episode of The Capsule. This is the show where we talk about the latest and greatest in gaming news. It's not a full podcast. We'll give you a little snippet, but in that little snippet, we give you a lot of robust information. We deep dive topics to entertain you and to make sure that you stay informed. In today's show, man, we got a doozy for you because today's show goes into something that's going to irritate some extreme fans of a particular platform, even though it shouldn't. Why shouldn't it? Because other fans that you could argue are extreme as well in, in, in a lot of ways, they are saying the same things now that we are saying in this video today. So hopefully with our voices in unison when it comes to what this platform is doing or particularly not doing, fans will listen up and unification speak out against it so this platform does better. What am I talking about? Well, the title of today's video is Xbox's ninth generation strategy, the road to failure. But before we get into all that, do us a huge favor, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and rock those bells for notifications, please. So you know when we're dropping these doses, we appreciate all of y'all straight up. First and foremost, I'm gonna welcome you gamers to an intriguing episode of The Capsule. Today, we dive deep into the world of gaming and explore why Xbox's ninth gen strategy has fallen short of expectations. From hardware bottlenecks to developer challenges, we'll uncover the reasons behind Xbox's struggles in the gaming arena. Now, to do so, we will talk about the various elements of their strategy with products and services this gen that put Xbox in a precarious situation thus far. So let's get started. And in order for us to do so, like I said, we're gonna break this up into different sections and look at them individually, with section one being the bottlenecks of the Xbox Series S. Yeah, first up, let's talk about that Series S, all right? The most affordable version of the Xbox ninth gen consoles, therefore the most successful in ushering gamers in to their ecosystem so far this gen. Well, it was poised to be a success, but has failed to deliver on core promises. The Series S was marketed as a 1440p, 60 frames per second gaming machine, but in reality, it struggles to consistently achieve this resolution and frame rate, particularly with current generation games. Now, it's evident that the Xbox strategy with the series consoles has faced some difficulties. Developers have been forced to prioritize the underpowered Series S due to the nature of Xbox's market, marketing focus and parity rules. This, is, this as a result has led to um, many games being underutilized on the more powerful Xbox Series X. This development parity imposed by Microsoft has hindered the full potential of the Series X so far. Let's continue on that with section two impact on the Xbox Series X sales potential. The limitations of the Series S have had a direct impact on the sales potential of the Xbox Series X. With developers divided in their focus, the, X the Series X did not receive the attention it deserved. As a result, it's faced challenges in growing its user base to compete with Sony's PlayStation 5, the weaker console on paper. Xbox's late entry of their development kits to developers may Many or well, many argue that's key to a lot of this. And I think it's fair to list this as a contributor to their current ninth gen woes. Just a not all of the reason behind it, but a contributor to it. The, the problem which was caused by the indecisiveness around even launching the Series S also played a role in their struggle to lure gamers to the platform based upon, again, this, the beginning domino in this track getting those development kits out to people late, right? Um, by not getting the development tools in the hands of developers in enough time prior to launch, it's been challenging for developers to have um, output of their games that back up the quote, world's most powerful console claims. Moreover, as Xbox Series, the most sold, uh, the Xbox Series S rather, the most sold Xbox Series console creates a quandary as far as prioritization. 
First off, developers naturally pri prioritize it over the Series X, like we said, due to the marketing, marketing um, and that marketing has led to it having more far-reaching saturation. However, the forced parity that we've also mentioned prior by Xbox leads to suboptimal experiences on both consoles. For instance, games like Baldur's Gate 3 originally intended to release on PlayStation and Xbox at launch faces a substantial delay on the Xbox consoles due to the underpowered nature of the Series S and development parity requirements leave the game off the Series X as a result, even though the Series X is more than capable to run it due to the, but it, it, it's not showing up there because of those parity uh, situations that are being implemented due to the hardware limitations of the features on the Series S. As a result of the Series S bottleneck, Sony's PlayStation was given an unintended assist by Xbox themselves, helping the PlayStation 5 establish a strong foothold, making it difficult for Xbox to catch up. That's a perfect segue to our next section. Section three, dev and publisher outreach challenges. Because it's not just about the hardware, it's about how lucrative even entertaining the platform will be to game makers. The growing number of developers who has mentioned begrudgingly the, the things they have to deal with when it comes to the Series S bottleneck, um, as far as you know, having to implement significant downgrades or those that just choose to avoid the console altogether, it seems to be on an uptick as of late. This altogether has affected Xbox's long-term desires for its entire ecosystem. Yes, this extends to cloud gaming and PC. Hear me out. While the current state of Xbox's Game Pass and day and date PC and cloud releases are appealing, the lack of a substantial and consistent user base growth on, as a matter of fact, a uh, user base on consoles now holds back their long-term efforts outside of consoles. How? Well, developers truly do want to go and make stuff everywhere where they can. However, with the corporate hamstrings implied by major publishers when it comes particularly to AAA genre-defining development, the one that Xbox as an ecosystem seems to be lacking um, it, per many critics and gamers, they will only be allowed where there is success so failure with your main user base which in xbox's case is console gamers likely will lessen the appetite publishers will have on less proven extensions of their business pc and cloud outside of fortnite their cloud venture has fallen way short of their expectations causing xbox to pull back major initiatives now game pass on the cloud though a game pass on PC, rather, their most promising sign of growth still isn't substantial enough where publishers are falling in line in total support. This is despite reports that Xbox hopes to reach 3 billion gamers by 2029. I shouldn't use the word hope. That's really this part of their strategy, really, based upon these reports. And I, I think it wouldn't be too, uh, too far off the reservation to say they are clearly not on pace at this moment to meet that goal based on their overall eco's lack of support and shortcomings. With that said, doing all this badgering of Xbox, right? Well, what is the way that they should have done it? Well, let's talk about that. Why Sony's PlayStation 5 approach prevailed. So what did Sony do differently that led to their success? Well, their approach with the PlayStation 5 offering two models with similar hardware and architecture streamlined development for developers, making it easier for them to create games for the platform. Sony's consistent approach allowed them to focus on delivering unified gaming experiences, while Xbox's strategy faced fragmentation due to the Series S limitations and, you know, the late entry of the Series S when it came to the development kits and so forth. With the focus shifting towards PlayStation, Xbox finds it challenging to attract developers and establish partnerships. 
This, in turn, affects their efforts in expanding, like we said, beyond consoles and hinders their growth of their ecosystem, including services like Game Pass. We have heard routinely Game Pass is at a halt on console. And that's a problem because, again, console is their biggest user base it just doesn't look good you talk about i want to be here i want to be there we're going to do this in mobile or whatever but you can't even master satisfying or master competing really with your current biggest user base not a good look with that said here's our conclusion as we wrap up our analysis, it's evident that Xbox's ninth gen strategy faced significant challenges. The underpowered Xbox Series S, the domino effect on the Xbox Series X, and the lack of developer support contributes to their struggles in competing with Sony's PlayStation 5 at the moment. The struggles faced by developers and the lack of significant user base growth have also hindered Xbox's expansion beyond consoles. On the other hand, Sony's approach with the PlayStation 5, its consistent hardware, and developer support have proven to be a winning formula so far. As we move forward, it will be interesting to see how both Microsoft and Sony continue to evolve their strategies and their ever-changing gaming landscape. The road to success is not always smooth. And Xbox must learn from these shortcomings. As gamers, we hope that both Microsoft and Sony continue to innovate and provide us with the best gaming experiences possible. We hope. <laughs> and that's it. Uh, that's all today, folks, for today's uh, video. We hope this discussion has provided you with a lot of thought provoking uh, discussions and, and, and deep dives into the into the gaming industry, particularly ninth generation gaming uh, Xbox versus PlayStation. Be sure to stay tuned for more exciting episodes of the capsule in the future. And until next time, have a wonderful gaming day. Before we get out, we completely go out again. If you did like what I had to say or you didn't, let us know in the comment section below. Check out the links below to follow us if you did. Those links will lead you to Broadband Bullies, PNTS Network, Hard Knock Digital Culture, and Cloud Dosage. With all that said, peace. And once again, have a wonderful gaming day.